Hey guys, TGIF, how's it going? The audio for today is brief, but it packs a punch. If you're not paying attention, you might miss the great response. I'm used to saying that only smartest people will understand this. Well, that's in a fun way I say that. But what I really mean is that only those who truly desire to improve themselves will get it. And as you may already know that my new TikTok was coming yesterday and now it's ready. So I'll put the link in the description box. All right. Wishing you an awesome Friday. Enjoy and chill. Thank you for listening. Bye now. So what I understand, we had a few conversations about this is... Feeling comes first. Thought comes first and feeling responds. Right. Because the feeling is the response. You see, your inner being is always flowing with you and always thinking a thought about what you're focused upon, always. And so tuned in, tapped in, turned on that your inner being is on the thought usually long before you get there. So that thought is already flowing. Then when you notice your thought about what your inner being is already flowing about, now you're going to have a feeling response when your thought enters the mix of what your inner being thinks. That's why emotion responds to thought. So I'm able to create, when I have those aha moments or when I see a manifestation in super jazz, I try to lock it in somewhere in my body physically so I can go back to it. So I'm able to create excitement in some of those things without thinking a particular thought. Well, don't try thought. to lock it in because that might cause tension in your body. Don't try to hold it in your body. Just trust the momentum of thought. Trust that the fact that you've thought it has... And this is an awkward statement, but it's made a vibrational inroad that will make it easier for you to find that vibration again. Once you've found it, it's less logical for you to not find it again. And it's more logical for you to find it again. But the thought that you find and whether it meshes with the thought that your inner being is thinking really has more to do with the other thoughts that you've been thinking and the relationship that they have to one another. If you are accustomed to worrying about this and worrying about this and worrying about this and worrying about this and your inner being is never worrying and then by some freak of nature you find a thought that isn't as worrisome, the fact that you've found that less worrisome thought has more to do with the other worrisome thoughts than it does about the fact that you found... Let's start again. <laughs> the subject doesn't matter. The vibration matters. So, can you separate the two? The subject doesn't matter, the vibration matters. For example, you can worry about your children, you can worry about your mate, you can worry about the government, you can worry about the economy, you can worry about earthquakes, you can worry about all these things. But worry is the vibrational indicator. And all those different topics just have the same vibrational frequency. Just like you have a lot of friends who are in different places on the emotional scale. And even though you could have 10 friends all named Jerry, but their label or the subject of them is not the same as the vibration of them. So it's the vibration that matters the most. So whatever vibration you accomplish is the vibration that most subjects are then going to gravitate to. At that moment in time. Most subjects are going to gravitate to the vibration that you've got going. Haven't you noticed that? Haven't you noticed that if something causes a wobble or an upset in you, then you find wobble or upsets in other things? It's like if you say, I got out on the wrong side of the bed, but your children annoy you, your mate annoys you, then traffic annoys you, then Starbucks annoys you, then the dry cleaners annoy you, and they're all different subjects, but they all annoy you because you're on the annoyance disc. You're in the vibrational frequency where that's all the receptive power that you've got. So you can go to a perfectly lovely dry cleaners where everybody's usually really happy and you walk in and you can only get from them what as far as your circuits are open. And everything else that they're offering, all the love and charm and expertise and clarity is just bouncing right off of you, even though it's there. As usual, you're asking the question that I'm about to ask, which is great. Thank you. So that's what I wanted to get at because... There's a certain vibration that I know, and with your help, I feel sometimes 
maybe topped. So I would like your help with rampage of taking my cork to a much higher place. So once I leave here, all I have to do is stop resisting. Because well, you, you see, your question is really a good one. Because in asking this question, you already understand the answer. Because you're asking for a rampage. And a rampage is nothing more than focusing on a subject with the singular intent of increasing the momentum of it. And increasing the momentum of something is what makes all the difference, isn't it? Isn't something that's moving faster more powerful than something that's moving slower? Isn't a train that's going only that way? Isn't it more powerful than a train that at the same time is going both ways? Sometimes they put engines on the back and on the front. Wouldn't it be funny if the engines were pulling in opposite directions and let's say that the connection to the cars was really substantial so this train is not going to pull apart not anytime soon and the engines are equal in their power and it's flat there's no hill or no advantage with gravity they're on a flat place and there's an engine pulling that way or let's say two let's say two pulling that way and they are pulling what's going to happen to that train it's going to stand still and it's going to emit a lot of tension into the atmosphere. It's going to stand still until one end or the other gives way. Ah. Till one end or the other gives way. And which end is likely to give way? Weak one. Which means the less practiced one in terms of vibration and momentum. So sometimes you've got your own tug of wars going on. And if you've been meditating, if you've been basking, if you've been feeling your own power, if you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and just lately, we're not talking about the whole of your life. These are not like your report cards that your mother keeps. <laughs> this is just what's happening lately. It's just what's dominant in your vibration right now. And then something comes up, it's inconsequential because your alignment just carries the day. But let's say you're too busy to meditate. Let's say you got too much to do to mess with that silly business. Let's say that you're just digging in and making it happen and doing what you're supposed to do and getting your marks on the chart and jumping through the hoops and putting up. Let's just say that you're cooperating. You've domesticated yourself into oblivion. You're cooperating with what everyone wants from you and you're not satisfying your own intentions. And so that's what you've been doing. And so even though the non-physical part of you is the most powerful part of you, what's active in your vibration right now is what's going to rule. And can you feel that your inner being is always pulling you in the direction of where you want to go? And if you just give in to it, you just have the most glorious ride. Instead of arguing for your limitations or justifying your behavior or trying to explain your goodness by this long list of things or by pumping yourself up to feel better by putting something else down, can you feel that your inner being is dominant and will win out? And you know how we know this? Because you will depart this physical body and you will reemerge into non physical and you will like it. You will. <laughs> You will like it. So why not give in to it now? Why keep arguing for your limitations now? Why not just say, hey, every day, this train that is me, my inner being has 20 engines, 20 engines. And I might pile up a few and I might have created a pretty good struggle. So most of you, it's like this. So here's the inner being part of the train and here's the resistant arguing for your limitations part of the train and your inner being is stronger and so instead of you just giving this up and just going you go like this <laughs> your inner being will win but you don't make it easy where if you just let go of the battle, of the struggle, of the defensiveness, of the argument. If you just give in to the fact that you are good and you are worthy and it's supposed to be fun and all really is well, just let go and fly in your physical body. I experienced that the other day when you say fly. I was taking kiteboarding lessons and I fought a lot to kite because it's air, it's invisible and I'm 200 pounds and wind said, no, we're going this way. And it was a lot more fun when I resisted. Where the wind wanted to go. Yeah. 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 I get it. Thank yeah. you. Really good conversation.